What is up, everybody? Liam Murphy back with the one, the only Davis Maddock. Davis, how you doing today? You know, I'm doing, I'm doing all right. Um, <clears throat> got all my, got all my projections done. I've been working through them very slowly, and uh, so, so got, got that as kind of a, a guiding rail instead of just uh, doing, doing some takes. So I have some, some projections to refer to now. Definitely want to pick your brain on that in a bit. Um, guys, we are doing a drafters draft today. We are currently at six out of 12. So uh, Rick says, let's go. Sir Sheeb, yes, six out of 12. Get in this drafters draft. If you want to draft with us today, drafters.com. You can use either Davis's referral code or mine. Um, Davis, I got my backward walking in yesterday. Got my 20 minute of backward walking in. I'm big on the self betterment. Um, have you done any backward walking lately? What's your, what's your uh, walk the people through some self betterment schedules you adhere to? Well, I backwards walk every day. Um, so I do. I'm backwards when I, man. I'm backwards man. I walk. You know, have you seen that movie? Uh, Freddy got no, I movie? haven't, but that's pretty good. You have to, you have uh, I, I've heard I've movie. heard that movie referenced a million times, but have never. Uh, the ni ni 90s boob comedy just kind of met, missed me because I was, uh, you know, I was born in 92. So I, I've missed a lot of these, like the, I like when I think of, too, but. so when I think of, of movies like that, like, like boob comedies, I think more of like American the Judd Pie. Apatow movies. No, no, not yeah, American Pie was, I think American Pie was maybe 98, 99. So when yeah, I think of, for it. when I think of movies like that, I think of, uh, you know, um, what, super bad and, um, Pineapple Express and and all of those like those are I guess those I'm are more my, of a like, dog than you because I was watching the previous generation uh, boob comedy. Uh, my, my favorite story about Freddie Got Fingered is I went with my best friend and his mom who was like begrudgingly renting this movie for us. She rented this movie and Old School for us, and of course we're at the blockbuster and we meet the mom who's like a bit horrified already about renting this movie. Uh, we meet her, her friend at the, at the blockbuster and she's like, Oh, what, what movies did you get the boys? You know, like and we're, we're in middle school, whatever. And she's like, Freddie got fingered, <laughs> you know, like, which is, has nothing to do with anything. Set. It's just like a Tom green craziness. Uh, we yeah. did fill this guys. Thanks. Wow. For helping, there we go. It's a quick fill helping out with that. Let's check the draft capital. I pulled the 111, and Davis, you're on the 112. So we're gonna have uh, to. The we're worst, be dude. Today. I hate. I hate these. Just the worst. I've been on a good stream, uh, or a good streak in the puppy right now of getting top five picks. So can't can't complain about that. But a little annoying. By the way, guys, if you were religious, we are at 666 subscribers. So make sure to bump that up or unsubscribe if you think that's more your move uh just just joking hit the subscribe button hit the like button help us get out of the devil numbers there uh yeah i mean this is going to be an interesting one where it's like we have to kind of duel each other I, you know there's some players we really like um mutually there's some players we we differ in yeah i'll leave you i'll leave you russell gage and james cook you can you can have those guys all right well i'm gonna start kelsey and pat mahomes so uh, I'm going to, I'm going to draft like it's 2021. Like that was a really common thing to do back then. Well, it would be, it would be really bad if we, if we ended up in a spot where we were trying to each get the same team stack. Like if you were trying to get the Broncos or trying to get the chiefs or the bills or something like that, because then that would just be annoying. We would just be picking each Thanks, other Danny. off the entire time. Um, yeah. I mean, someone's pointing out that drafters flip JT one hundred one has to sharps. <clears throat> I mean, I think that's, both public sentiment but i also would say like i listen to the etr free pods friends of the channel a bunch of those guys um and both levitan and um silva had mccaffrey as their 101 which honestly like makes sense i think um, every i think every sharp good player has cmc their number one what's the minimum like going into this year what's the minimum amount of jt you'd be comfortable with is it zero percent is it four percent is it six percent yeah i have four percent right now but i'm not planning on adding on that position when cmc is available no i'll take him but you you're gonna add him when he's like the 103 one, like you're gonna get some shares there yeah yeah but i'm not i'm not planning on um <clears throat> yeah like i i'm very comfortable like i think on 
underdog, I have 17% Christian McCaffrey, which feels that really, feels good. really good. Like, like to just to see Christian McCaffrey on your front page of exposures is you're like, okay, I'm going into the season in a good position. Last year I had like 20% Dalvin cook, not because I was taking them one oh one, just because I ran real cold on the one oh ones and McCaffrey was like always one oh one. Yeah. And so I got I just got a bunch of one oh two. If if um, you had to guess who do you think are my two most drafted players on underdog right now? Obviously because they have to be cheap, right? They how like, many like that, how many uh, are you filtering for BBM only or are you including puppy? 140, 147 teams in the puppy and BBM. I have drafted 75 BBMs, nine puppy threes, 39 puppy ones, 23 puppy twos, and eight Pomeranians. Is Jarek McKinnon in there? No, not even close. I I have nine percent Jarek McKinnon. Um, give me give me some draft rounds. To help these help. guys are these guys have gone later than pick 140 the entire time, and they're not a quarterback. They're a skill position player. Um. Tyrion Davis Price. Tyrion Davis Price is number three. I have him in, on twenty three percent of my teams. Um, you know, like I, I know, I know the guys. I just got to think about because you know I, I have a pretty good. I'm pretty. They're good not team. running backs. They they are both theoretically pass catchers. <laughs> theoretically, oh Albert O. Albert O is number one. Albert O is my greatest exposure player. And we'll have to talk about that in a bit. Um, and then. Will Fuller, KJ Hamler. Taysom, buddy. Tell Taysom, theoretically fast catch. That was a giveaway. That was a giveaway. That You know, honestly, I'm not – oh, man. Really wanted Kelsey there. We're going to take CD on the recent, uh, the recent mini news there. Yesterday I had on Dan Zach, the WSOP player of the year, um, and he had some interesting thought. He's He worked with Cody and, and – um, and best ball, and he had some interesting thoughts. Um, not everything I agreed with, and like, but he just took it from like a coding perspective, and I think it could have been a little like, I mean, I didn't grill him on his whole process, but he was basically against zero RB for advanced purposes. I I think he's I think he's a hundred percent correct to be against zero RB for advance rates. Yeah, but I th I think he ought, like he said it's like drawing dead to win, which I just didn't. Uh, agree I I think it's not drawing dead to. And win. I don't want to be misquoting Dan Zach because again, like we're you know you know me I'm ADHD we jump around, but um, I don't think it's drawing dead to win. But if if you said you could draft 150 teams of zero RB or 150 teams of hero RB or bimodal RB, I would I would choose the hero RB or, or bimodal RB. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the chalk. Ironically, zero RB did have a higher advance rate last year, uh, but that's always going to be oh, that will always come down to how do the first and second round running backs perform? Do they get injured? How how do the contingent values? And do? and I think I think the more important point is is the this year's. Um, Are we right about the wide yeah. receiver rankings? Well, that that I think is you just said that that is true in every draft strategy. But is there a Leonard Fournette, James Conner this year? Do they get the entire season? Do they get six weeks? Is, what, do, does Zeke get hurt in week two? And then more importantly, is there an undrafted guy who smashes right? Because because if if you don't have access, team. if you if you because I think CP was only drafted on. Rudman posted this. I want to say something like 550 total teams yeah, in BBM2 really or something That's like that. That's because he wasn't listed as a, um, a running back. Yeah, he was listed as a wide receiver. So, like, even though I knew, like, I would have taken some if he was listed at running back. But I was like, I, I actually, I actually, uh, one of my claims to fame would be that I had a couple Cordero Patterson teams last year. Did, did to, obviously. Me, to me, it was like, I don't want a guy who's going to be playing running back at the wide receiver position. You want the opposite. You yeah, know? you, you and, prefer the, which is why he's, which is why he's better um, right now. Yeah, this year. Um, what, what I meant by the wide receiver ranking is the market was like, we really whiffed on some guy. Like when you can get Cooper Cup and Debo, like the top two wide receiver and Jamar Chase, like wide receiver one, two, and three does not go in the first two rounds. Like I wouldn't say that's a usual draft landscape where usually we're pretty good. Like we should be pretty confident that the first two rounds this year, first three rounds, like the top 
whatever the top five wide receivers is probably going to come from these rounds in my opinion and not it's not going to be some guy who i don't know that that's that's how i'm viewing it a little bit zero uh, rb zero rb is a better much 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 better strategy in managed leagues and it's like to, to the point i agree that, and, and i sometimes but i also want to give the pushback on that so so you you, you go first well, it's very simple. Is that yeah. one, it doesn't matter if you're eating two points that you're running back to a lot of weeks because most fantasy games are not close. It's a head to head game, not a cumulative game. And you have the advantage of consistently rotating through Eno Benjamin, Jeff Wilson Jr., Kenyon Drake, Zamir, like you just you and and you just gotta get lucky once in a season. Agreed. Um the other thing I would say is why I sometimes like zero RB and I feel good about in best ball is a, I don't have to like the head to head nature obviously changes a lot, but I don't have to choose if I draft eight running backs on a team, I don't have to choose who the two are, right? Like I just approach it by volume. I get a mix of pass catchers, a mix of contingent values and like the opportunity to be nutted is, is pretty, uh, pretty. Uh, the, so like the, the nutted thing is true. If, but it's very it's very specific because even you know uh, Eli Mitchell and Corderell Patterson wouldn't have nutted you out last season because those guys didn't finish you know literally the running back one or whatever at their position. But if you for, it's just it's uh it, I mean it's very interesting right it's like and and you know no one no one I think is like right or wrong basically. Yeah, and like you know, I think uh, I think the way Dan was approaching it didn't incorporate the current year's draft landscape as much in my opinion where the dead zone this year quote unquote has some guys that we fucking love this is not mike davis from last yeah. year right yeah i i actually i actually think that is a, a pretty cogent this is, Hall, this is elijah mitchell you know like aj dylan even like these are guys i mean who, even even look if you you know close your ears everyone but even zeke right who is who i is almost put been, him there and i was just like ah, I'm i mean really he's been a, he's been i believe what a top 10 running back uh in terms of volume every year of his career and zeke is much better in drafters probably right full, well full full ppr and the the and, and I'm just talking about cumulative points. Cumulative points, yeah, where you're yeah. not needing 47 points in week 17 against the Titans, but he can just kind of grind out, you know, uh, what 240 points over the course of the year. So let's talk about this David Montgomery special teams <laughs> snaps because it's literally breaking my brain, dude. Like, did you actually? I, I only read the headline. I didn't even click on the report, but like, what's going on there? It is is. So this like, is was this is comfortable, and they're like trying to humble check him. I I think what it, it it totally sounds like to me is you hire a hardo defensive coach, and he just comes in and tries to like you know like Joe Judge making the Giants guys run wind sprints when they messed up or whatever. Like he's trying to coach them like a college team, you know, because he's a hard. I don't know anything about Matt Everflus, but him being a defensive coordinator just would indicate to me that he's like a hardo. Yeah, and I mean some coaches are just like. There are some new coaching staffs where previously the coach philosophy was not to do running back by community, and that might change. Like teams like the Vikings, teams like the Bears, like we, you know, we could see uh, difference. Like just because Dalvin Cook has always been the guy, and then it was Dalvin. Like maybe they're not doing that anymore. Um, even the even the Rams, like the Rams came out and said, and by the way, the, the what the market reacts to and what the market doesn't react to is interesting. Like. He came out and said, I view Henderson and Akers as co ones. And people still don't want Henderson. Yeah, um, that's uh that's insane to me because I think Henderson might even be better. He's probably one of the best running back picks in that round. Like he doesn't get lumped into the uh like this territory of like league winners, but he should probably be going in this range, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, you're I think you're probably right. I'm he's someone I had a had a lot last year when he was cheap had no none when he got expensive didn't have a ton to begin the process but have lately been hammering the uh, button um let's let's do a let's do a couple uh degen checks right now uh davis one yeah. let's have you hand built any dk lineups for week one uh just just to get one in there no absolutely not no not no even. really maker lineups no, no, dude, 
I, I feel I talked about this with someone the other day. Someone was asking me about this, and I was like, dude, do you know like how much shit I have going? Not even in terms of like real life stuff, but like I'm grinding, you know, second tier English soccer DFS. I'm playing like it's just no. I'm not. I'm not even. I'm week one is not even uh, a, a, a twinkle in my eye right now. Um. All right. Well, just curious. Just curious. You know, what in a wouldn't have been out around to throw one in there just to, just to get a feeler in there. Um, next question. Since our last stream, I think, is when you got degen shamed slash a couple people just dunked on you. I thought you handled it well, but uh, walk us through your emotions after you tweeted out the honeymoon slow draft question and, and everyone and their mother jumped in there. Well, I mean, look, you know, it's a lot of, a lot of the people commenting are already rich, right? Levitan, already rich. Smiz already rich. So it's like, of course, they just want to go on a vacation and go be rich. Uh, but, you know, a lot of us don't, a lot of us, uh, you know, obviously don't have the uh, the same ability. Like for me to get rich, I got to bank one of these tournaments, right? Uh, Bitcoin's got to be a billion dollars. I got to win $2 million playing fantasy football. Like I'm not, I'm not trying to, um, uh, you know, like fart around with, uh, with this stuff. So it's, it's like the, like not getting, to 150 max in BBM three is like a disaster for me. Uh, agreed. Um, yeah. And I mean, I think also people are taking like the own it, like, you know, no one said that you're entering 4,000 slow drafts. Also, you know, like you can very easily do that and not impact your schedule at all. Like you wake up in the morning, your wife is taking a shower, you make your picks. She's none the wiser that you even did that. You know, it's not like you're like, hiking up Mount Kilimanjaro and you're like, hold on guys, got, got to make my 12th round selection right now. You know, like it doesn't have to impact your, your vacation at all. You are, you are like, obviously correct. Right. It's it's like, it's like, dude, slow draft take, like doing all the picks takes like five minutes, especially if after you make your selection, you star all your guys. Right. So, so it's like, I do all my Bronco. I, I take Travis Kelsey in the first round. I star every chief. I star every Bronco. I take the other Swift. I, I hear I you speak every... about this a lot. Well, it's just it's just shorthand, right? Because then I just know who I'm going to be. Boys, we life. have made it. We finally got the sex bots to comment on the live stream. We appreciate you, scammers, whoever you are. Now I have to uh, block my first block on this channel. But guys, come on, get oh oh no, boys! I blocked it, and and because I did that, I can't. Take oh wait, let me just show someone else. StreamYard's got to fix that though, because if I didn't think through of like showing someone removing it, that comment was just gonna be st stuck on screen. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, I think it was the honeymoon talk that uh that that, that brought, brought him out. in. Yeah. yeah, we we just we did just get a question in chat, but then it it went away. Um, which uh which question do you want? Someone someone said, "Why do we keep saying something?" I didn't I didn't read oh, it all the way. Think instead of bop. Oh, it's is big. I think he's a, he's making a joke about his username. I think. Yeah, get, but, yeah, get out of here, bro. It's always yeah. it's always been Bink, bro. Davis, you can see these questions by the way if you hit the comment button. There's there's countless questions. I just don't always uh, highlight them. Yeah, I got uh, I got uh, I got all my windows up. I got I got shit going on. You know you know how it goes. <laughs> um, you're you're counting on me doing the driving. That makes sense. Yes, correct. Um, you are you're driving you're driving this car, Liam. Davis and I are going to be doing a main event draft. Actually, I was thinking about it today, Davis. I think because uh, I was talking about Kyle Dvorak too. I think it would be fun for you, me, and Kyle to do one together. If if you're okay with uh, an additional sure. voice in the kitchen, yeah, um, I don't, yeah, that's that's good by me. So we're gonna because, be because again, in uh, you know, in my the the where I am and in life, like obviously the money of winning one of these tournaments is great. But buddy, if I am part of a team that wins the main event part of a consortium that wins the, uh, uh, you know, the best ball mania, anything like that. I mean, it's so big for my brand. Like that basically like takes care yes. of my work for, uh, for, for the next five years. Like I will never, I will never, you know, be, be hurting for any of those things. No. Yeah. And like, no one can like, it's hard to question you. And, and I, we've seen plenty of people do that in the industry, I think. Right. Like it didn't uh, Al Smizzle bank. And then he, he pivoted into content or was, like, I don't, I don't know. The well, Al, Al was doing, I was doing a little bit of content before, but um, yeah, Smiz, Smiz is one of the that, Millie maker. You know? Yeah. Dink, Dinkmeyer won the Millie maker. Uh, Peter yeah, Jennings, but he was yeah, already Jennings. running a fantasy website. Yes. Yeah. 
You so, know, with me having Mitchell and Debo and Josh Allen, I can't take Lance. I think I'm going to take Lance. I know you are. I know you are, but we are not. So we're, we're going to give our good friend Davis there. You know, I like MVS, but I'm not sure about him ahead of some of these other wide receivers in this range. Yeah, I'm taking I'm taking Valdez scaling uh, because I I tweeted this out this morning and like the you know it's like it's like you tweeted this yesterday like what storyline would happen for the 2022 season and you look back and you go well that was so obvious I mean the most obvious one is that the market was dead ass wrong that the Chiefs were going to be uh, a, a, a middling team All, best best ball moderate saying that dudes are holding on to a millionaire maker win from eight years ago. Buddy, I guarantee you, if you want a millionaire maker, you would you would literally tell everyone about it forever. I guarantee I would. If I have like, I mean, shit, I split a FanDuel millie maker four year or three years ago, uh, like four hundred eighteen ways in basketball, <laughs> and I still I like still remember it, and I still remember that happening. Like, trust me, you you like it's it is a seminal life moment. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. I mean. I'm, and it's it's weird being like one of the only best ball guys. Like it's it's more you know I feel like it lets me have my victory victory lap for a much longer time period, you know where it's like yeah okay you win week two of the Millie Maker in DraftKings no one wants to hear for, about you in like week eight especially if it's not like a live final but you win best ball hey you get the whole summer you get until there's the next champion kind of you know yeah hundred um, percent. <laughs> Felix here who won the DK Millie Maker says I tell random dudes I'm playing with on Call of Duty Hope, hopefully one of them is Kyler Murray man that would be a fun uh, a fun uh, <laughs> loop there okay so let's right summarize now, our teams for yeah, your let's, let's, audio let's listeners real teams. quick so Liam drafting from 111 CeeDee Lamb Debo Samuel Josh Allen Gabe Davis DK Metcalf Eli Mitchell Traylon Burks Chris Olave. I started from the 12 spot. I did Devonte Adams, then DeAndre Swift. Then I took Travis Etienne and Jalen Waddle. Then Chris Godwin and Amari Cooper. Uh, I took Trey Lance at 84 and Valdez Scantling at 85. And uh, the, the 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 Amari Cooper bags feel pretty light if this Deshaun Watson suspension ends up holding up because Amari Cooper is really good and better than a lot of the guys going ahead of him if Deshaun Watson is able to play in games this year. You know, um, part of my philosophy going into this year is anyone who is on my winning team try to get plenty of shares on them, you know. But Amari Cooper is not a button I've been clicking. I still don't really plan on clicking the Deshaun button. Like, I'm not I'm not convinced of anything there, even though I know the NFL is probably just, like, kind of do what's easy for them. But I, I don't know. Um, I, I, I have no idea either, and that uncertainty kept me from picking him. Um, mostly because I, I felt like Deshaun Watson was unlikely to play this season. And it was I, I still, that. It was part like not trying to root for him. You yeah. Know, like, like imagine having the week 17 sweat and being like, wow, the reason I'm going to win $2 million is I bet on a rapist and the market, you know, was morally superior to me and didn't want to have a rapist on their team. Like it, it does, it does stink. Uh, Davis, let's talk about this. I named the title of this video, how to win money playing fantasy football. So can we can we answer this question? I think the answer is you should be playing best ball, not your not your home league. If you're gonna put in one twenty dollar lineup this year, do your home league and then also throw one in on drafters or um or uh, underdog, etc. Um, I, I maybe Davis's answer would be just draft Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. Um, uh, uh, I mean, my answer would just be uh, figure out what type of game style you like right? Whether it be best ball, whether it be seasonal, and then just like really focus on that and do a really good job at that and kind of filter out or, or could, you know, it could be DFS or whatever. Um, all right. So we answered the clickbait title guys, guys, we're workshopping over here. I need to need to hire a video editor. We're gonna, we're gonna upgrade as we go though. Um, I thought about Miles Sanders, by the way, when I took Chris Olave, but I just decided and I, and I still like Sanders with the recent news because at worst case he's like a like a he's like Elijah Mitchell just on the Eagles like a guy who's gonna like house the ball or not you know um, this is sure. a tough range I'll take Hunt like how I approach the Browns sometimes is I I'll buy skill position players that I like um, especially the cheaper ones like Hunt 
David Njoku, where ultimately like court, like any quarterback is very unlikely to be the reason that you're winning these contests, right? Even if Deshaun gets unsuspended, like I would not say that those teams are like a massive favorite to take it down or anything. Um, we got I mean, James quarter, Cook. quarterback, quarterback is the position where the market, uh, where, where you can level it out by just having like good ping ponging performances or whatever, like very different, you know, if Deshaun Watson, you know, if there was a running back in the same circumstance and he was a 12th round pick, but should actually be like a third round pick, that is a huge market breaking thing. Um, Danny asked thoughts on best ball cash games. You know, for me, Danny, it's just like a, a mental health thing where it's like, yeah, not, not for me. I mean, I get why people do it, but I, it's not for me. I'm just not trying to like be, uh, you know, I'm on my phone looking at Twitter enough a day. I'm not trying to also totally gr grind out $4 of EV one draft at a time, you know, like, and like back in the day, like, I think like when Peter Jennings and Justin Herzig were getting like tens of thousands of dollars down in these cash games, like. It was because there were some other whales who were like back then you could just take Travis Kelsey and then auto fill your like take Travis Kelsey 101 and you just had such a positional advantage where you know the, the, these are only three man leagues so you just can't make up the points on the tight end one is the point and like the third guy wasn't hip to that logic. Um, yes. So it'd be like Herzig and Jennings splitting it and then like you know that guy losing all his money or whatever. Um, Preston says, Correct. cool shirt. Thanks, man. Where are we taking Kamara now? You know, I'm still taking, I, I want Kamara still in this range. I'm not going to be taking Kamara if he becomes a first round pick. I don't think I'll be taking Kamara if he becomes a late second round pick. There's a lot of, there's a lot of pass game car competition for him. Um, where like, I don't think he's a lock to see the amount of targets he's seen in the past. And, you know, like I, I'm not, I'm not sure if that's how the saints will, play football you know yeah yeah i mean i i'm pretty bullish on kamara if he if he plays the the tricky thing uh it seems for Playoffs. mr kamara is that they're you know because his his trial got pushed back two months or whatever is you could you could, he could play and he could be starting and you could be getting points from him and then he could be gone in yeah. the playoffs which is uh not it's it is the opposite of what maybe which, he's a better maybe he's a better play on drafters that? Have we ever seen that where didn't it a, didn't it happen to Zeke? Didn't Zeke get suspended? We talked about game? this in the past. Like, unless it's a PED thing, and by the way, the league the league really needs to work on their optics because a guy just got hit for PEDs and got a six game suspension. Um, that does that doesn't sit well with a lot of people for for many reasons. Um, yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's it's absurd. Uh, the the whole the whole um, uh, the whole. Deshaun Watson thing is like, it's a huge eyesore for the league. I don't really understand how they're doing any of this crap. You know, like I just don't, I, it, it all seems, it all seems not good, but I, you, I, the, long story were, short, I like Kamara where he goes. Were you, would you be taking him if he becomes like a one, two turn guy? Uh, no, no, no way. Me either. Like I'll take him now. Um, were you in a pros versus Joe's yesterday, Davis? I am in uh I am in the slow pros versus Joe's. Oh, so maybe they're asking me. I liked my team. Um we did that over on ship chasing if you haven't seen that. It was it was a good good old blast. I took Henderson. Um I don't think we told the people our picks, so I went Hunt and Cook in the ninth and tenth, and then Henderson and Davis went Penny Ertz, and then he just got Lawrence and Albert O. Gooey Boonham. And I am on the clock. Um where are you out on Rojo, man? Well, it was not uh, good good news for him yesterday, but I don't I don't really think his range of outcomes has changed a ton, right? Like his yeah, his, I, his his range is his range. I still like. I will never forget that I watched that run against the Panthers. I had exposure then. The um, the ninety nine the ninety yard touchdown. Yes, and I like. I'm sorry. The guy is just a good runner and maybe he, like yeah. ultimately I think the Rashad white news coming out about him being a knucklehead, like that's probably good for Rojo for us. Like we should be maybe even more bullish on Rojo because I like to believe that Rojo's not going to like take his experience from Tampa Bay and be like, great. I love how that worked out. Like I love that. I barely got to play. 
I like to think that he could mature and be like, Hey, sure. um, you know, like this is my last chance. I need to take this shit seriously. And I'm with the best coaching staff and one of the best quarterbacks to make that happen. Yeah. I mean, the thing with Rojo is he's not going to play on passing downs at all. So he just has to straight up beat out, um, Clyde Edwards Hilaire for not, not straight up, but just for, for goal line duties. Like he just has to be the primary short yardage goal line back. Cause he's not going to catch any passes. And if he can do that. And you know, if McKinnon or Isaiah Pacheco or Derek or where yeah, are you on this Isaiah Pacheco shit? That feels totally made up to me. That that feels that feels like uh, you, you know fan, fanciful off season stuff. You know, trying to look up uh, Rojo's weight and Clyde Edwards Alaire's weight. So uh, Rojo pretty light at two hundred five coming out. Um, Ceh, I'm I'm shocked. I, I thought he would maybe Ceh is two hundred seven, um, but Rojo five was 5'10", and CEH is 5'7". So, you know, I would assume Rojo grew into his frame and added some weight um, in the pros. Yeah. I mean, may, and maybe he – I mean, remember he said last offseason he was at 160 because of his gallbladder thing. Well, that was CEH, yeah. But I, yeah. I, for the goal line role, I was just trying to be like, who is the bigger dude, you know? I mean, Rojo's just good at it, though. Like, Rojo sucked at, like, almost everything they asked him to do, but he is pretty good at short yardage, and he just he just can't pass block at all is his deal. Ryan, I don't take any shade from this. You know, it's it's fu the funny thing about the pros versus Joes is... Is that it's I, it's actually the opposite. Is the content guys are the Joes and the pros are... Or the, the Joes yeah. are the guys who play a lot of FFPC. It's kind of funny. So I, didn't, I didn't realize that going in. I just thought they were like literally raffling off like random Twitter users as the sure. Joes. And I was like, oh, great. Like, I hope one of the Joes win. And then I was talking about it with like Pat Crane backstage. And he's like, oh, yeah, no, this guy won this content. I'm like, oh. So yeah, I mean, I guess I qualify for either the the Joe or the quote unquote pro. I have I had one article on fantasy points, Ryan. So I'm doing ask me anything on their Discord today. So technically, technically a, a pro. Um, technically with, a pro with with Joe tendencies. Um. So yeah, I don't know, man. But like, even if Rojo gets cut, someone's gonna sign him. You know, I'm not. Yeah, I'm someone not someone will sign that. That is that is kind of what I'm telling myself with my with my Rojo bags. I don't know why I have so much on, on him on BBM three over because like, you because you always kind of need a running back where he goes. I like Madison straight up over him, and I I don't think I was sure. Really doing, you know, um, summarizing those picks. Uh, yeah, the, let's talk about you know first off. I'm sure both of us are really sad for Tim Patrick. I think he was going to have a big year, in my opinion. Um, yeah, it's, really it's like it's like the it's like the old line. I feel I feel bad for Tim Patrick, but it's tremendous content because it's really good for KJ Hamler and Alberto. Well, and the one good thing is Tim Patrick got paid before. Yes, that yes, is, that is. We, yeah, we yeah like that to is. Hear that, we know? do like that. Yeah, We're not 100%. rooting for NFL owners um, ever. <laughs> you know, correct. Like, um, and so. Tim Patrick, I believe it was like 18 and a half guaranteed for injury. Um, and with, you know, with today's medicine, like, look, he's going to have to work hard. That's going to be annoying, but he will get back out there. No problem, in my opinion. Yes. Um, I'm not be, really, I don't have back. a lot of Damian Pierce, but at this cost with me starting. Well, that's who, maybe. that's who I was going to take. So good pick. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, but let's talk about it. So I think it's good for Albert O. I think it's good for Dolchitz. I think it's good for Judy and Sutton. And I think it's good for Hamler. Like it's good for, and it's good for the running backs. Like, again, not everyone is going to get there. But again, like it just, you should be even wanting more shares of the Broncos guys. But, you know, like maybe they run more too tight end now. Maybe they, whatever. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's clearly, uh, I think it's clearly a thing where, also, you know, I, I think that um, the onus on Sutton and Judy to play well is, is like, really important because, let's be honest, Jerry Judy's kind of been shit in the NFL. You know, three touchdowns in two years, like, really has not looked all that great or A lot dynamic. of injury bad luck quite, well, like... Sure, right? sure. I've never been a Judy guy either, but, like, when he was getting... Like, once he starts getting, like... There was a time period, and, and I think that's kind of gone now with the injury, but... He used to consistently like go in like the like 
in this Elijah Moore range where I yeah. was just being like, give me, give me Judy there. You know, like he plays for the Broncos. I love their playoff schedule, um, et cetera. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't, uh, I don't disagree with that stuff, but like Judy and Sutton are probably being, they're certainly being overdrafted relative to what their NFL statistics have been up until this point. But like the, just from like a team perspective, from a Denver Broncos perspective, they don't really have um, like a life raft. If those guys don't play well, you know, the rest of the guys on the Broncos roster, Seth Williams, Tyree Cleveland, Travis Fulgham, like, you know, maybe, maybe they end up being a, a destination for Odell Beckham. I doubt it, but maybe, you know, there, there are a couple, but I, and, but I just think Hamler, and Dulcich and Albert O like have to play a lot now because, because I don't think they want to play Judy like a hundred, like a bunch of snaps a game. Like he's been like a 70% snap share guy in his career up into this point. Yeah. Who's going to play the slot to you? Cause I think Tim Patrick big slot was the, was the rumor. And well, now it, feel, they... it, feel, it feels like it'll just be Judy now. Right. Yeah. And so uh, someone's asking about Seth Williams. I remember, I think that name for like Ben Retro was in on him a year ago. Um, I don't think that's how you should be approaching it. I think it's just more, more Javante Williams, more of the top guys, more of the tight ends, more of KJ Hamler. Um, could be, could be really good for, um, could be really good for Javante actually. Just like they, they yeah. pass to the running backs a little bit more. They just run a little bit more. More two tight end helps. More helps two tight Javante. end. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can totally see that. Summarizing our picks, so I went Damian Pierce and David Nujoku, my first tight end, and uh, Davis went Cleo Herbert, who is like a big – before the Tyrion Davis price FUD, which I'm still not convinced that he, he should be that FUDed. Like, it used to be Herbert and Tyrion for me, and then a big tier gap uh, when it's like these guys left, like Daryl Williams, Jamal Williams, Marlon Mack. Um, but now after Herbert, I think it's a big tier break, tier break for me until like – the J.D. McKissicks, the Tyrion, Darrell Williams, et cetera. Um, yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I like my my team. Like, I started with six wide receivers, and I like my six uh, running backs. I think there's plenty of upside and um, guys who should at least be seeing the field early so I can, I can piece together the early weeks. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think my team is that great, to be honest. It's fine. When you double tap quarterback early, it it's it's hard, man. You're just giving away a skill position player on someone like me. Like I went Josh Allen, so I gave up a third round pick, but I'm gonna push that quarterback too to try to recoup the the tenth. But round I got I got there. a I got a good price. I got a good price on Lance, but a bad price on Lawrence. It's pick. I just hate picking on the turn. Picking on the turn just stinks, especially when there's someone sharp right before you. Uh, yeah. Joke. Well, at least we're not trying to take the same guys. But I, I also, I also hate getting locked out of elite tight end. And if you're picking on the back turn, it's so like you either have to reach on Waller or Kittle at the fourth pick, or you never get them. So I just kind of always hate my teams that turn out this way. Yeah, and like you got the tail end of guys who could be elite to me. Like uh, you got Ertz, and the next it goes to Komet. Like the gap between Ertz and Komet to me is huge. You know, like I, I, yeah. I know Komet's drawn live to be the two there. I don't care, you know, like, um, and with my team, like I feel so good at running back and wide receiver. I'm not ruling out four tight ends at all. Um, and I, I like the three tight. So I just went Evan Ingram and Hayden Hurst. Maybe Davis would have taken Ingram with the Trevor Lawrence. Maybe not with him having two earlier tight ends. He went Jared Goff and Will Fuller where, the teams where I don't feel like I have elite wide receivers, I love adding Fuller to because yep. if if he is the the Texans from uh, Tyler Sex Bots in under forty minutes, big time stream now. I know, man. Hey, where are my sponsors at Red Bull? You know, throw a little cooler back here. By the way, astute viewers will notice I changed my chair. This was a hundred dollar gaming chair. I recommend it, guys. Even if you work a professional job. You know, just who cares if you look like a fool on Zoom to your boomer boss? You know, it's good for your back. It's good for your posture. These gaming chairs is why I bought it. Um, I bought it when I was a teacher or I mean, when I was worked for chess.com. So got the literally the cheapest one, but it's more comfortable for me than a uh, office chair or whatever. I have had a, an office chair sitting, get ready to put up like next to my desk for like four months and I haven't, haven't put it together. So. I just, I, this has been in a different room and I was like, okay, I'll roll it in finally after, after I've been doing all these streams. Yeah. 
This, uh, I mean, so so the reason why I'm starting to take Fuller more now is I'm pretty sure he's going to sign with the Cowboys. It just like it, at this point, so, at this point, it, it just makes too much sense for him not to. So I wasn't aware of who Aaron Wilson was. Uh, Pat and Pat, I was talking to Pat and um, Kyle Dvorak at the time, and I didn't really realize they were company men when I when I said this comment. So maybe you know, like you know, they, they have they have onuses, but I was like, sure. hey, you know, like look, I love the news anything I take, but it was a really convenient timing. And what he said is shit. I could say teams are, but, but he wouldn't, he wouldn't Will Fuller right after an injury. He no. said that because his agent told him to text him that, which is just an indication that Will Fuller is alive and has an agent. It's an indication that the agent wants him to play football, which of course that's, right? that's enough. That is enough for but, me but to like, start maybe drafting the him. Trying to like outside pressure Will Fuller, like maybe he's that's like, fine. Hey, that's yeah, fine. No, agreed, agreed. If it works, I'm for it. And that is that is literally that is literally just proof of life, and that's all that I needed. Like I was like I didn't want to go into the season with like 30 percent Will Fuller in the 16th round or whatever. But now that I know at least someone in Will Fuller's life wants him to play football, I'm back in on taking him. Yeah, and like I don't think I've gotten any on my main event teams yet, but. A much better pick for a main event type shit. Where oh, yeah, where you can drop him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Romeo Dubs, I, there, there was a camp report or two. He is now mega steep. Dude, the, 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 the Romeo Dubs hype coming out of Green Bay is, like, unbelievable. Steady drumbeat there. And, you know, like, I'm still not out on Christian Watson, man. I understand a lot of people don't like him, yada, yada, yada. But why could it not be the Christian Watson show? Uh, well, I mean, it's because Christian Watson is kind of, uh, kind of far behind, right? Higher draft. Yeah, no, he's injured, but higher draft capital, literally athletic freak. Um, there's a lot, a lot to like in that profile. You know, what's a, you know, what's an absolutely terrible price is the Alan Lazard price in the seventh round. You know, so the out, I think he's gotten a bit too steep. Dang. I would have taken... We're taking Tannehill. Do I have anyone from Houston? I got Damian Pierce. That's some thin, some thin correlation, but people are, well, let me see actually Davis's team. Davis does not need a quarterback. So no, we will let Davis for quarterback if he wants to for the, for the laughs. And we are going to take, I will not, I will not be for quarterbacking. I got to take a couple of running backs here with, we're uh, gonna take with this Mostert, which I don't have as much Mostert as other people, but, um, Fun, fun piece for best. I player. like, I like Mostert, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna bet against you, and I'm gonna take Sony Michelle, and then I'm gonna take Jeff Wilson. Well, the presence of Sony Michelle is, is the real Mostert pause of the breaks for me. It's like, how confident are you that if both are healthy, it's Mostert over Michelle? I mean, I think they play different roles, but like Michelle was. I don't. I Michelle is Michelle is insurance for every other running back on the team. Michelle is insurance for Chase Edmonds sucking or getting hurt. He's insurance for Mostert sucking or getting hurt. I mean, he's like Jordan Howard, right? Jordan Howard only plays when everyone else, when everyone else is dead, right? Yeah. Um, like Sony Michelle, I don't think got a touch until Henderson got hurt, right? They were like playing both, and like Michelle's just a dependable. Yeah, he's, like, he is. He is. He is. Yard. He's Mike Davis, right? Like he's a guy that you could just see coaches liking. Yes, you know? clearly. Clearly, I think that's the only reason he's on a roster. I mean, he like failed a physical, and the Dolphins probably just didn't give him one. They're like, "Fuck it, you'll you'll recover." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? he's fine. Yeah, he failed a physical at the Saints or something. Um, so I went most Moster and Davis Mills. Uh, the Davis Mills drum beats have been strong. So have the Brevin Jordan drum beats, even though. Coach Lovey Smith Fer said Farrell Brown is starting. Yeah, but but I I don't think I think what like Farrell Brown's the blocker, I think, is what because like the yeah, he's the huge, Jordan he's is like dude. he's catching touchdowns left and right, you know. Um so that's interesting. Um let's see. What are you where are you at on these on these TDP FUD FUD reports that, that Jeff Wilson Jr. and Trey and Trey Sermon looks yoked? Uh, according to reports, I'm glad you asked that. Um, my take is sometimes in camp, like in camp, a lot of the way it works is like they run the ball right and they don't tackle to the ground. And then these, like the players keep running. Like if you see that Rojo highlight, like they, yeah. just, the, they, they're told like, so Tyrion Davis's price game is not Elijah Mitchell, right? Like he's not 
the backup for Elijah he, Mitchell. He's not a guy who's gonna look. He's not. He's not a guy who's gonna look good in practice. He's more likely to get the job done when the when the bullets are flying. He's the guy who's going to punch the ball in from the one yeah. yard line. Very he's similar. Pretty- very similar to Jeff Wilson, actually. Yeah. So the real question is like, look, there's a lot of guys that filled that role though on that team. You know, Trey Sermon is big. You know, like and. Yeah, it's not out of the question that he uh that he whatever is back, but I've not been taking him as much anymore, but I'm not like, oh no, I have like because I do have a big tier in Davis Price back, but like I'm still I'm still happy to have that. The 49ers, you know, it probably the my main takeaway from it is I'm trying to get more Elijah Mitchell. Um, is how I've been approaching it just because Maybe Mitchell is the clear one, and at worst he well, is. I think he, I think he completely is the clear one. No, I, I mean he always was, right? But if like Mitchell, maybe- if Mitchell was on any other team in the league, literally any other team, put him on the Commanders, put him on the Dolphins, put him on just whoever, he'd be a second round pick based off of his production and and efficiency last season. Yeah, and that's ironic because like the 49ers are the teams you want running backs from. But the the question is like historically Shanahan's wanted to play kind of a stable guys a little bit and. Uh, maybe he just doesn't do that that much or, you know, I could see having a really fast guy on the field with Trey Lance who kind of plays the role as a power runner as like an enticing thing for a play caller where you have to worry about Trey Lance who's, who's like fast enough and powerful coming down at you. And you have to worry about Elijah Mitchell uh, binking it outside. Yeah. I mean, I, I, the, 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 my mo, my main concern with Eli Mitchell was they just didn't use him as a pass catcher at all. Yeah. So Ethan, but no Thomas, one's going to be catching passes on that team. Right. For, right. The running back position. Yeah. That, that probably, that probably is the truth. Damn. These, these last rounds, the 19th and 20th rounds just end up being disgusting. I want to take one Thorin, but he got taken. Um, We'll do Dolchich there. Oh, I was gonna take. I was gonna take Dolchich. I was gonna double up. I was. I've, gonna do, I've done up. that on a couple teams. Quite a bit of teams recently, actually. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I needed. I need to take another tight end. Um, they're all bad. I'm gonna take Janu because they're paying him sixteen million dollars, and I need a Jacksonville or San Francisco wide receiver. I will take Danny Gray. That was just a lot of bang. Um, you know, I got a lot of quests, so I think what I'm going to do is bet against the recent dubs hype, which comes off of like one play and just be like, maybe it's flop lag Amari Rogers instead. Um, yeah, I would not do that. I don't think Amari Rogers is going to make the team. So I went with, uh, there was a recent, there's like a little smidge of a report, but you know, you never know with some of these reports, like maybe they're actually just trying to, I, I saw that trade. Amari Rogers had a good day of practice today. Yeah, maybe there's, but maybe that's because they want to trade him, you know? Like, um, so I ended up with a 2 7 7 4, a very interesting roster construction that I quite like because I don't see holes in my wide receivers. I don't like the, you know, obviously I don't have the first or second round running backs, but my crew, my crew running backs is interesting and I like my tight end dart. So reading through the whole team, Josh Allen and Davis Mills at quarterback. Elijah Mitchell, Kareem Hunt, James Cook, Daryl Henderson, Ronald Jones, Damian Pierce, and Raheem Mostert at running back, at wide receiver, C.D. Lamb, Debo Samuel, Gabe Davis, D.K. Metcalf, Traylon Burks, Chris Olave, and Amari Rogers, and a tight end, David Njoku, Evan Ingram, Hayden Hurst, and Greg Dolchitz. Can't believe, can't believe you took Dolchitz for me. So I have a three six eight three build. Uh, this is probably my favorite thing about. Um, it's just my favorite thing about the 20 round drafts, both on drafters and on, uh, DK, where you can take three quarterbacks and three tight ends. You can, you can just really lace up those condoms. So I went Trey Lance, Trevor Lawrence, Jared Goff, DeAndre Swift, Travis Etienne, Rashad Penny, who I never take, but got him 10 spots after ADP Khalil Herbert, who is apparently the starting running back for the bears. Cause David Montgomery is playing special teams. Now, Sony, Michelle, uh, and Jeff Wilson jr both of who I think are actually pretty good uh, picks in a cumulative scoring format and only good in UD if they happen to get their time in the playoffs. Uh, then I, 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 another guy I hardly take Devonte Adams, Jalen Waddle, who I do like Chris Godwin, who I do like 
Cooper, who I'm trying to make up my bags on a little bit right now. Marquez Valdez Scantling, who I do really like. I just want all the Chiefs. Marvin Jones, who I only took because I had Trevor Lawrence. William Fuller, we just laid out the bull case for him. Danny Gray, who actually is getting some good reviews from 49ers camp right now. And then Zachers, Alberto, and Jonu Smith. Jonu, pretty interesting to me uh, because the, the, the Patriots just need anyone who is athletic. Yeah, flop lag, man. Like, it's not unqu- – like, teams change what they do. That Like, players can be in the doghouse. Um, interestingly, I'm not sure if – I took on a main event team that I really like to start with, um, but I took Pat Mahomes um, – Kind of with the thought that I'll get Sky Moore or MVS on the wraparound. On the wraparound, like right before me, the guy took Sky Moore. Maybe just to spite me, I'm not really sure. Um, but what's interesting is I then got MVS two rounds later to go with Mahomes instead. So on the FFBC, I got Mahomes way after Sky Moore. And on this site, MVS goes ahead of Sky Moore. And I generally try to think of drafters as pretty sharp. But Sky Moore also went in the 90s when he used to be going in the in the 100s how do you feel about the sky Moore versus uh mbs i just whatever side i'm drafting on i just take feel order about, yeah, hey, yeah i i don't care agreed. it's like it's like i'm gonna have so many teams that have uh you know two chiefs players three chiefs players um yeah ff do but here's the thing john who's gonna smash his adp you can't say that about every single patriots player and what does a john who smash look like you know john, like, john who smash honestly six touchdowns John, John, who yeah, smashed was six exactly touchdowns, like I think. six touchdowns, eight points per game. You're like, oh, that like, was so, like, like literally, like literally a couple weeks where he is on the field but does not receive a target or a carry. Like, like literally does not receive the ball. Like last year, I had a bunch of Dan Arnold, and I was feeling great those weeks where we started him DFS. I was like, wow, look, I hit on yeah. this. Um, all right, Davis. Well, don't want to take too much of your time. How do you want to uh, tell the people what you got coming up? Is there a swole cast? Uh, today there, there is actually a swole cast today that people can tune into, um, you know, directly, directly after this. So, uh, come, come over there for that. Reeves is coming on and, uh, what, what time is that at? That is at one thirty central time, two thirty Eastern, of course, uh, sports, great, fantasy football podcast, take cast. And, uh, then don't get mad at me two weeks from now when there's no content. Cause I will be out of the country doing slow best ball drafts from, from a beach. Maybe we'll get Davis in on the, uh, on the Island. No, just kidding. We'll get, we'll get, we'll get a stand in for when he's out of here. Uh, I'm not promising that I won't take a week off too. You know, like I, you I might should, you should totally take a week off. You deserve it. I might get a travel in before the NFL season starts. And I have a bunch of weddings and shit coming up. So that's just going to happen then. And a bachelor party. Um, I was list. I almost tweeted out a really long reply to like the Jeff Edelstein episode where I was, I was like the discussion with David Kitchen and about reaching for ADP and et cetera. And I was like, this is better discussed in audio. So we'll talk about that uh, one day or so. But guys, check out the Swolecast. Thanks for tuning in. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and most importantly, have a great day. Peace.